Hi 4 Hers, we're back again and we're going to cover the order Diptera, which is made up of the flies, mosquitoes, and gnat type insects. And so before we get started, um, I wanted to cover a little information about what makes a fly a fly. Um, and so the word Diptera, di means two, and Terra means wings, so they're two-winged insects. So if you look at them, you can find these little things called haltiers, H-A-L-T-E-R-E-S, haltiers, um, right here, whoops, right here and right here, called a hal, tier. Um, so if I'm a senior and intermediate, I would definitely know that. If I'm a junior, it might be a good idea to know that as well. The other thing about the diptera group is that they do have a complete life cycle. So if you think about flies, they have that maggot, and that will help you understand that they are tr they have a true complete life cycle. The other term for it is holometabolous, right? Mom lays an egg, eggs hatch out. The larvae are called maggots. The larva will eat and grow, leave wherever it is that they're feeding on, and then build a, a pupa or a cocoon case. Another thing that I would know about these guys is that all dipterans needs either a totally aquatic, in the case of mosquitoes, or a semi-aquatic environment to complete their life cycle. So when we have a lot of moisture, you have a fly problem. You reduce moisture in some way, you don't have a fly problem. Their mouth parts are hostilate or sucking, and they come in a variety of different ways that make them sucking mouth parts or hostilate mouth parts. So a mosquito obviously sucks your blood, bites you, um, so that's sucking mouth parts. Then there are things like a horsefly that have like a stabbing mouth part that will cause blood, and they kind of have little um, scrapers at the end of it to cut you. If you've ever been bitten by a horsefly, or a deer fly even, it's, it's not, it doesn't feel very good. So those are still hostilate or sucking mouth parts. Then there's hostilate mouth parts, which are like sponges. And this is a surfid fly or a um, hover fly. And you can see it's got this spongy thing, kind of looks like a, the hoof of a, of a deer or something. And imagine if you don't have teeth anymore, all you have are sponges instead of teeth. So they're eating liquid food like um, nectar and other things like that. The most popular sponging mouth part that we see are on house flies. They have sponging mouth parts. They pick up food in the liquid form. And usually the way that they do that is by regurgitating first, throwing up, and then that, that melts what, the, what they threw up on, and then they can sponge it back up again. So those are the, the things that I think are important to know about the diptera group. Um, let's get into the actual species that you guys need to know. Juniors, Y'all need to know a species, juniors, intermediates, and seniors. This covers everybody. You guys need to know crane flies. Crane flies are these things that come out in the springtime. I call them, I call them Texas's um, uh, groundhog because they come out and you know that spring is really around the corner. Inconsequential. They can't even bite you. Um, their mouth parts are very, very reduced. They grow in damp, wet habitat. So when we have a very, very wet winter, we have a whole lot more of those guys. And usually it's springtime that they emerge. Big, um, skinny little legs, but basically harmless. <clears throat> Horsefly is the other one that everybody needs to know. This is considered a pest. They're found in woodland type areas. They suck the blood from livestock. So they're a pest because they cause stress to the animals. And they can be small or large, up to even an inch and a half. They, they, what characterizes a horsefly to me is the shape of the eyes, how they have really, really big eyes and the eyes almost cover the whole entire head because a horsefly kind of looks like a housefly, but the housefly's eyes are shaped a little bit different, right? Like a horsefly wraps all the way around almost and a housefly, not quite, it's more rounded. It's not that kind of um, angular type of a, of a head. The other thing that I notice about horse houseflies is that their eyes are red. Um, so I look at that when I, when I, at least when I see a live one. They also have more stripes on their back than the horsefly does. 
when I look at them. But I really look at, is there um, a pattern on the wings? Are the eyes really, really big? Can I see the mouth parts? Do I see those long mouth parts that are going to stab like a, like a knife? Or do I see the spongy mouth parts? Houseflies have spongy mouth parts. Um, they are a pest. Their host is barns. Um, they're just a nuisance, and that's what makes them a pest. But they can also transmit diseases on their feet and on their mouth. They can pick something up and get like a bacteria and then crawl across your food, and then you eat it, and you can get sick from it. Four stripes on the thorax. Dusty brown in color, uh, or dusty gray in color, and sponging mouth parts. And there you can see its complete life cycle up here um, in the top corner. And then we've got mosquitoes. Everybody should be able to get a mosquito. Mosquitoes are pretty easy, right? So obviously they're pests. They suck our blood. They annoy us, but they transmit diseases, and that's what makes them a big issue. Um, only I would know that only the female sucks the blood, and the reason why is because she needs the blood for protein in order to make eggs. Males look a little bit different. This one is a male right here. And if you look at his antenna right there, um, they're fluffier, they're bushier. Females, on the other hand, have a much, um, have a thinner antenna, just a little string of an antenna. And the reason is the male's job is to find the female. He's, he, they find each other through scent. The, his antenna are used for sensing and smelling things. And the bigger his antenna, the better his nose works. And then we have surfid flies. This is the last one that you juniors are going to have to know. Intermediates and seniors is a few more that y'all need to know. They're also called flower flies. They're also called hover flies. Um, either one of those three will be accepted on the contest. They mimic bees, um, but they have to they don't have a fuzzy body and they have that those huge eyeballs. So I would look at the head to tell the difference. Um, extremely beneficial. The adults are pollinators, but the larva eat aphids. They feed on tons of aphids, so they're they're really cool to see. Flowers are going to be their host. So if you're a junior in the 4-H entomology contest, you guys can go ahead and shut down and log off. Um, we're going to cover now the intermediate and senior insects. So intermediates, you guys have just three more that you need to know. One is the common cattle grub. I, I uh, don't know, even on the state contest, how they would display this for you. It would have to be in alcohol. The common cattle grub is a pest. Um, the adult is hairy and it's like the size of a bee, but their larvae are what are what we want you probably most likely to recognize and what we want you to understand what it does a little bit more. So the adult lays its eggs um, on the body of the cattle and then the larvae have little hooks for mouth parts and they tear at the flesh and will crawl in and then they make these lumps as they're emerging underneath the skin um, and they they ruin. So if you were going to use that cow for meat production or for dairy, it's stressing it out. And so it's not going to be able to consume as much food to put on the weight that you want it to do to produce the milk that you want it to. But also it ruins the hide, right? So maybe you can't use it for what you think you want to use it for, but you could use its hide. Well, you can't now. So they're a major pest and pretty gross. And you would probably be looking for, like, what characterizes a, a fly larva is that you don't really see a separate head on one end or the other. Um, so when we get into some of the caterpillars, you'll have to recognize the, the lepidopterans. They actually have a head. So if you see just this maggot-looking thing, it's going to be the common cattle grub most likely on that contest. Um, intermediates and seniors, you guys also need to know the horn fly. So what I know about the horn fly, these guys have piercing sucking mouth parts. They, they like to hang out on the, the head and around the horn of the of cattle, but also along their back. They're a major nuisance, stress out the animal. It doesn't put on weight, doesn't do what you want that animal to do. Um, it is smaller than a horse than a house fly, but it looks similar to a house fly. But here's the big difference to me. Much, much tinier. And when they land, their wings are always in a V. So that's, that's how I can tell it's them versus somebody else. Okay, so those, oh, and then we have the sorghum midge. Sorghum midge is also need to be known by intermediates um, and seniors. This is a pest. Its host is obviously going to be sorghum. Um, it, a midge is kind of like a gnat, like another term for a gnat. We have midges that will come out of water and stuff that are a nuisance around lights at night. A reddish, teeny tiny fly 
you see right here, it has that long ovipositor from the female and she's laying her eggs in the sorghum seed. And then the sorghum seed uh, doesn't produce because the larva develops inside of it and feeds on the sorghum. All right, so if you're an intermediate, you guys can go ahead and shut down and log off because now we're gonna cover diptera that only the seniors need to know. And there's six additional diptera that you guys need to be aware of. Bee flies are one. Bee flies look like surfid flies. The big difference between the two to me is that bee flies are fuzzy like a bee is. A surfid fly is not. So just compare, um, look in Google and try to see as many pictures as you want. Um, Bee flies are also found around flowers. They look similar to bees, obviously. They're really fuzzy. Um, flowers is the host, and they're going to be beneficial because they're pollinators. Buffalo gnats are gross, a gross type of fly. It's a biting fly, so it's a pest. Um, they feed on, they will bite humans, they'll bite livestock, they'll bite pets. And the larvae are found in flowing streams. So they're an indicator of, of fairly good high oxygenated water. Um, the adults are super strong flyers. So when they emerge, they can fly long distances to bother people. Um, and that, to me, they're kind of, they're a fly, a boring small fly that has that humped back to it. And that's how I would, that's how I would identify these guys. Blowflies to me are easy to identify because they're metallic, they're brown. They're bronze, they're blue, um, they're green, they're shiny and metallic. That's got to be a blowfly. They are considered for the contest now um, variable because they are a nuisance, but they feed on carrion and break it down. So they have um, bad qualities, but they also have some very beneficial qualities. If we didn't have these guys around, we'd have a lot of dead animals just rotting all the time. So they do definitely have some benefit environmentally. Some, um, some larvae are also used for treating diseases because they eat decaying organic, decaying flesh. They can be used um, as therapy to clean up wounds. And there's a lot of um, history with that, with wars. Um, soldiers would come in off of the field and they'd be very, very sick and they'd have these nasty wounds and some wounds couldn't be treated or they didn't think they could treat them. They had to decide who they could save and who they couldn't. Took those that they could save and kept their wounds clean inside and those that they didn't think they could save kept outside. Flies would come and feed on it and actually clean the wound out. And those guys oftentimes, while they had nasty scars, um, fared better than those that were getting medical treatment sometimes or equally. Um, so for your blowflies carry on, Decaying bodies are going to be um, the host. It's variable. And these guys have a, a sponging type mouth part also. It's the larva that will feed and chew on the, 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 um, the flesh. So they feed on recycled decay, decaying organic matter excrement also. They're considered a scavenger. They eat anything. Deer flies are similar to me to horse flies, but deer flies are big and they have, a, like you see lots of pattern in their wings. Um, they're called tabanids and um, um, they bite and it doesn't feel very good. It's really similar to horse flies in that they're a pest, they bite and they're found in woodlands. Um, they say that they roost in cedar trees, so they're also, also sometimes called cedar flies. I guess that's also where probably the deer are bedding down. Um, but they kind of have the, the um, V-shaped wings and um, they're not as brown. A horsefly is like a gray, brown and gray color. These guys are almost a little more colorful, I guess. That's why I would differentiate those two. Then you've got flesh flies. Um, flesh flies look like horseflies and houseflies. Houseflies have red eyes. Um, horse flies have those gigantic eyes. Flesh flies have red eyes, a little smaller than a horse fly. They don't have four stripes on the back. They only have three. But here's how I tell it's a flesh fly. Flesh flies have these like really big feet. They have these big pads on their feet and they're real fuzzy on their body. If you can, if you see around their body, they usually have these spiky hairs. And yes, you will find a, a, a horse fly or a house fly that looks similar to that. But that's the way that I that's what I use to differentiate the two of those guys. So flesh flies are considered um, variable also. 
they are no longer considered a pest for the contest. So it's not a pest, it's variable. Um, and they are scavengers, they feed on dead animals, they can also be parasites, um, so they're good and they're bad. The host for these guys is also carrion. Robber flies are very unique. Um, this is one from the side. Sometimes they look like mimic a bumblebee almost, but they have they usually have a very big thorax and a long skinny abdomen, or a long thinner abdomen, I should say. They're beneficial. Um, they're active predators. They um, they they catch their food on the fly. Um, their host is in woodland type areas. They will mimic bumblebees. They can be a pest, and I would know this um, because they will sit and wait around beehives and they will eat the bees as they're coming out. So they're a pest in that respect. And then we have sheep kids. So when around Thanksgiving comes around and you guys are hunting for um, deer, when you kill a deer, look on its body and see if you see these big lice type things. Those are, those are sheep kids. Um, they are a type of fly that is wingless. As an adult, they're found deep. They found they're found on wildlife, but but in this case, um, we're talking about them being found on sheep, and so they're going to be found deep into the wool or the fur and close to the skin because they're like a, they're like lice. They're feeding on the blood of them. Um, they don't really prefer humans, but from what I have heard, that when they do feed on humans, the welt can last for weeks and weeks and weeks. Never had it personally happen to me, so I don't know for sure. Um, but they're a pest. Pest sheep is going to be the host in this case. And they're going to have sucking mouth press because they're sucking out the blood. Okay, the last one that you guys need to know is a stable fly. Stable flies look like horn flies to me, unfortunately. They are a pest of cattle. Um, the host is going to be cattle for a stable fly. They have seven rounded dark spots on the abdomen. No way you can tell it on, on this picture, but you can see it on this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. It almost looks like a face, right? So they have seven spots on their abdomen. The larvae like to feed on manure. Um, so when you reduce manure, you, have, you don't have an issue with stable flies. But the adults are not like a house fly with the beak. So they're going to be not as, they're going to be about the same size as a house fly, not as tiny as the, as the horn fly, kind of the same look to them. But the mouth part is like a beak, and you can see it right here. And that stabs into your skin and into the skin of your livestock, and it causes a whole lot of stress with them. So look for the spots, look for the beak. That will differentiate them from a house fly and a horn fly. And that is the last of the diptera that we need to know for the 4-H entomology contest.